We've taken a look at the Super Mario franchise from its beginning days on the Nintendo, its successful console wars defining titles on the Super Nintendo, and examined the plumber's entry into 3D with the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube. As we continue to celebrate 30 years of gaming's most recognizable franchise, we take a look at the most recent entries in the series, starting with his forays onto the DS, the Wii, and the Wii U with new Super Mario Brothers, working our way through the award-winning Mario Galaxy games, and ending up with 3D World and 3D Land for the 3DS. It's been a very long road for the mustachioed plumber, and for all he's done for the big N, what next? Listen in, it's part three of our 30th anniversary celebration of the Super Mario series, next on Downloadable Content. content i am brian and we're joined as always by ron everyone and we bring back captain n we have doug hey there guys we need to get you like a cape and all of the all of we need to you to cosplay the the leather belt with a giant n on it (laughs) the the leatherman yeah the uh the leatherman jacket and just the uh you know the belt with the buckle man I, I I am dying to see someone do like a cosplay group from that show, like all the ridiculous versions of the characters. Wasn't Samus on that show too? I don't know. If Samus was. Let's see. There was like a princess girl. Um, like not maybe, Princess Zelda. No, I, yeah, I, it was like it was like some generic princess. Um, there was um Simon Belmont, who was like the goofy guy, Mega Man. And I know, they, and like they had like Mother Brain voice by like the same person who did like Audrey Two and Little Shop of Horrors. And I remember watching it religiously, but I remember so little of the actual content. I think in season two they brought in Game Boy as well. <laughs> I kind of actually hope, Doug, that you know if you end up do going to to PAX again, that you take up that mantle and uh, and and represent. <laughs> I've, I've seen people do like Captain N, but I'm, I, yeah. I want to see like the full group. <laughs> That's what needs to really happen. Yeah. Maybe I uh, could, maybe I could get in on that cosplay fun. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Pax Prime just ended, and I have to tip my hat to to the, the people who go to PAX Prime because, I mean, as we all know, PAX East in Boston is a three-day event and by the third day I'm usually wiped and so are most of the attendees. The handheld lounges particularly become nothing more than glorified napping areas. I don't know how uh, those who go to PAX Prime manage four days. Isn't four days a relatively recent thing for them, too? I honestly don't know. I mean, I've never been to Prax Prime. That's the uh, the main con, the main PAX. So, I honestly don't know. Um, that's why that's Dragon Con, the one I'm doing this this coming weekend, is four days, and by the end you you do start to run out of steam. But thankfully, it's a much more you know kitchen sink kind of convention, so there's a lot more stuff to do. I don't know. As much as I love games, I don't know if I could do four days of just games. Yeah, it's, you know, three days is, I mean, there's a lot to do at at PAX East, but still, just the amount of energy required. It's just... Exactly. It's just by the Usually four days kind of start on a Thursday, too. They don't usually go Friday through Monday. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, this, this PAX Prime goes Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, steering back a few quantum leaps... 
We're going to be talking, this is part three of our 30th anniversary celebration of the Super Mario franchise. And before we dive into today's discussion, let me get the usual plugs out of the way. You can get every episode of downloadable content on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher. And, as always, if you want to get in touch with us, there's a variety of ways you can do that. Facebook.com slash DLContent at Twitter at DLContent on Tumblr, dlcpodcast.tumblr.com. And of course, you can always email us dlcontent1 at gmail.com. And there we go. All the different ways to get downloadable content into your ears. So drop us a line. Let me know how you like the episodes. Let me know if you want to be in an episode. I do post from time to time future updates uh, for future recordings of downloadable content. If you want ever want to be in on a recording, just let us know and we will get you in. Because I like to talk to anyone who likes video games. So, And you can make friends with Ron here. Yeah, right. I, I do appreciate the friendships. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug, too. I mean, D- Doug could always use more, more friends to geek out with. <laughs> you kids like animes? <laughs> It's named after the convention where I go to go to watch all my Japanese animes. <laughs> <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five just came up, but that's a whole new that's a whole new discussion. So we left off the la- in uh, part two. The last game we talked about was Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, and that was the last Mario game main the main main Mario game. Mario was off doing other things like being a soccer player, a golfer, a baseball player. Uh, he was doing all of that, you know, side stuff, but New Super Mario Brothers was the first main game in four years, came out on the DS, May of 2006, and with it, it became the first side-scrolling Mario game starring Mario since Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, way the hell back for the Game Boy. Wow. Yeah. Not real. I knew it had been some time, but uh, I didn't realize it had been that long. Yeah, yeah. Because you remember Mario Land Three was Wario. Yeah. And after that, uh, Nintendo jumped to the 3D plane with Mario 64. So yeah, this was the first side-scrolling Mario game in a while. <laughs> and it was a refreshing. It was a. Ref- it was refreshing to see. Absolutely. Like, there's, it's kind of, it kind of fell back to that formula of it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Where the, I think there was just kind of that realization of, wait a minute, these, this style is still fun. It doesn't. We can make a really good looking game with the engine, and I mean, there's, there's definitely three D elements. I mean, it's just side scrolling, and that's kind of what made it really click as, uh, so much more fun. I feel like. And, you, and I think this is where you see a lot more stuff come back. Like, you you know, this has stuff like, you know, it, it, just alternate exits and stuff like that. To, or, you know, alternate paths. That was one of the big things in the uh, su- uh, Super Mario World, the, uh, the first Super Nintendo game. Was that path of, you know, okay... There's, you know, multiple ways to get through it. You can't, you don't have to go just one way. Right, I mean, there were a total of 80 levels, and a- as you said, uh, the way you, you unlocked alternate paths uh, in each world was by the advent of using uh, star coins. And there were three per level, and to unlock an, a path, or in some cases a toad house, which... Uh, like Super Mario 3 gave you power-ups. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like it took some things from New Super Mario World, like the ability to hold a power-up in reserve, and you could see that uh, on the bottom screen. Yeah. It, it just really... It, it really, like I said, it real. I think what really kind of sold it was it was realizing that just because it's older doesn't mean it's broken. 
and I think you know it was realizing that there is a lot of enjoyment to be had in that that side scrolling formula. Just because it seems simple and relatively easy to do doesn't mean it's not entertaining. Yeah, and I think that's and that's a big part of it. I mean, I always kind of go back to what's the spirit of Nintendo, and you know, I couldn't be on the Awada episode, but if you look at it, it's the bottom line is always going to be for a lot of these games. It should be fun. And I think that's really what kind of makes this one work. And it was it was finding something different with the, the 3DS, too. Like, you know, I, I wasn't there, you know, there was the item in reserve, but, you know, it did make use of the dual screens a lot more for just kind of looking at your progress and things like that. Yeah, the bottom screen, you could see how many star coins you picked up, and it also showed you how far along the, the level you were at. Which is a feature I have come to love so much. Because if I'm, like, messing around looking for stuff, and it's like, okay, I haven't found stuff yet, but I'm only this far into the level, I don't have to worry too much. Right, it probably drove completionists up the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, that, that's, I, I speak as one of those guilty parties. <laughs> it was a nice combination of taking some of the great elements from games like Super Mario World and bringing them, you know, you have now much better graphics with the, with the DS, um, now making use of the dual screens. You've got... Um, new power-ups that came along with it to keep things fresh and interesting, like uh, the blue Koopa shell seeing, seeing, seen in yeah. a game other than Mario Kart. <laughs> Still wrecking people's faces, though. Yes. Uh, the Mega Mushroom. That was one of the greatest things ever created. Just, you go and just destroy everything in your path. Do your best Godzilla impersonation. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this would that, that I would I would rank that among like one of the most satisfying power ups in all of games. I will do you one better, and we'll talk more about this in depth. Uh, we're gonna do a part four um, in which we talk about a lot of the offshoots, and I will bring up Paper Mario. But <laughs> the one better I think is when you get the star in Super Paper Mario. <laughs> yes. And and I think you know what I'm talking about, both of you. Yeah. That you just become this giant pixelated 8-bit and just for 30 seconds just decimate. <laughs> yeah, and just just Starman your which just laying waste to everything. But the Mega Mushroom was an excellent jumping point. I I, I when I got that, I too felt a moment of carnal glee as I'm like finally something that uh, we've been I kind of felt that this was something we had been waiting 20 years for yeah let's and, make it easier to destroy every block yeah let's <laughs> just make it you know, you know when we always have those hard to reach blocks not anymore <laughs> um, and then of course you have the opposite of that the mini mushroom which which came very handy because they instituted tiny pipes. Yeah. And and for some reason, with the mini mushroom, Mario became Jesus. He became Jesus. He also became, you know, like, I remember the jumps were greater, too, or was that a later edition? I mean, I, I remember some of those things were so frustrating. The thing I remember most about the mini mushroom and this might be from later games where they have it. Where it's like you would have to enter the level with it in reserve and like trying to hold on to it for like that one little exit got so infuriating. Yeah. It it did, because yeah, you had to pocket one. And you know, those were those were kind of rare as far as power ups went. Yeah. Because there were only, you know, not you know enough. There were some levels that took advantage of it, but there, yeah, you're right. There were some in which, in order to get that last star medal in the level, you needed to have one in reserve to use it at the right time. And and the thing is, with the mini mushroom, is obviously you do not get, you know, you don't. 
if you get hit, you're dead. It's not you get hit and you get, you know, back to normal, you know, back to small Mario. It's, you know, you're hit, you're dead. Mm -hmm. So there was a risk there as well. Yeah. But yeah, like we said, it was it was a nice, refreshing thing, and I think that's kind of what we're going to be seeing a lot of going further is going back to the well and not find, remembering what worked in the past, and just kind of improve improving what was there instead of going all new. I think it kind of needed to happen, though. I mean, again, first. Yeah first major side-scrolling game since the Game Boy, uh, I think it was a good way for not only experienced players to get back in with, but also to bring in new players. Yeah, exactly. It was a good middle ground for both people. And it, it's, 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 it's making the, pri the, the, the entry point very accessible for everyone. And, and that's... I'm always, I'm always a fan when a franchise can do that where it's oh you've never played before this one before don't worry you can still jump in and you're not going to be lost and i and, you know again i have to throw out the caveat spoiler alert we might throw out some spoilers out there mm -hmm. I, I did like the little twist of the whole the little the little twist on the whole bowser kidnapping the peach thing you know mm -hmm. I like the fact how you uh, you you, th you think you have basically sent Bowser to his demise at the end of World One, where in fact you then see him again in the final level as an incredibly powerful lava, and suddenly it's like, oh shit, you need to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a nice twist because I mean. You know, okay, fine. You have Bowser Junior to deal with, but it's just so you're like, okay, final level, okay, and then holy shit, and Bowser takes up half the screen. Yeah. So I think we've kind of hit, you know, all the points on that one, but because I'm I'm looking at the list we've got ready. And I, I am so ready for the next one on the list. I, I'm sure you are. Uh, so, Ron, what what were your thoughts on the on the first of the DS games for Mario? Um, I, I, I'm kind of surprised it took Nintendo this long to get back to it. Honestly, considering like the DS came out almost two years prior to New Super Mario Bros. being released, I was kind of surprised it took Nintendo that long to. Make another side-scrolling Mario game, but I'm glad they did. Yeah, yeah. It was eventually, they, eventually they needed something to push the console because, I mean, as we all remember, there were many, many people who doubted Nintendo. Like, what? The, two screens? What are, you, what are you talking about, man? Mm -hmm. And then this game came out, and all was forgiven. And Nintendo, and then there, that's when you know Miyamoto and Iwata should have looked into the camera. You know, said, "Are you not entertained?" and walked off. But <laughs> yeah, but if we, if I may take the transition here, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> because you know, talking uh, surprised, it's you know not something that came out right away. If we're going into the next installment, Super Mario Galaxy, that came out a while after the Wii was out, and that was something that always. That always always seemed weird to me because so many Mario games are kind of launch titles to really show off the system. And I don't get me wrong, I was very happy when I finally picked up Super Mario Galaxy, and it did definitely it definitely shows off what the Wii is capable of. But it always amazed me that it wasn't a launch title. Yeah, I mean, it came out a you know a year after the the Wii launched, and I I'm a, I was a bit surprised, but I mean, I bought the Wii. Well, I I wanted to buy the Wii at launch, but everyone kept selling out. You know, I couldn't couldn't get one for about eight months because somehow this thing was printing money for for Nintendo, and none of the gaming community could figure out why. It took me a while, um, too, and it was. Uh, 
my so my 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 wee story was um I was at, I was them friends to go to a Red Sox game like they had an extra ticket. And I had like the afternoon off or something. And I just swung by the GameStop that was in the Prudential Center Mall, which for those of you who went to the first PAX East, that's the mall that was connected to the I, Heinz. I, I've been to the Prudential Center yeah. Mall. Um, and I just, you know, it's like I'd always been just kind of casually. And it's like, it was like, ah, I'll just ask, hey, you guys got any Wii's in stock? Yeah, we got a couple. Oh, okay. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, to, you know, just always used to the disappointed answer. No, we're, no, we sold out like 10 minutes after they got here. And it was just like, oh, because, you know, this had been month. And I was like, uh, okay. And so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm buying one. <laughs> and so I had to take the, you know, buy this. And I was just, like, planning to spend, like, the rest of the afternoon, you know, around the back bay of Boston. And I'm, like, so I'm, like, texting my friend, I may be a few minutes, a little bit late. I just bought a Wii, and I need to bring it home and then go back, which is, at best, a two-hour trip, you know, from subway station, you know, getting on the subway, getting home, dropping it off, and back, getting back on the subway. <laughs> and it's just, like, oh, I could, <laughs> I was all... Like, I was almost ready to say, eh, I'm going to skip the free Red Sox game. I kind of wouldn't have blamed you if you had, actually. it was. Well, the, 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 that's what my friends ended up saying, but it, at the same time, it was it was just one of those weird stroke of luck moments. Anyway. Anyway, all right. But yeah, Super Mario Galaxy, which, my God, probably the most stunning game visually in, in the entire Mario yeah. library, probably only rivaled by Mario Galaxy 2. Um, this, this game is freaking gorgeous. This, I knew I was in for a treat at the opening title. Fully orchestrated soundtrack for the entire game. Nintendo was kind of pulling out all of the stops for this one. That, that was the thing, like, the, the music, like, it didn't, like, I knew there was, like, hey, the music sounds really good, but it didn't click with me that this was fully orchestrated till I was in the garden, you know, the kind of the hub area, after I'd unlocked, and you know how the music gets better, the more stuff you've made available, yep. and I just kind of stopped for a moment and, like, just listened, and it's like, holy crap, this sounds amazing, and then it really clicked with the, like, this is not just really well done synth. This is an actual orchestra. Yeah, a fifty-piece orchestra, in fact. Yeah. It was, uh... Yeah, and oh my god, like we, you know, I said before, like a lot of the Nintendo, like Mario titles, are a lot of that. Once again, focusing on fun and man, like I remember, like you know, you do the spin move and you'd be like next to one of the toads and he'd spin along would spin along and make that excited Yahoo <laughs> right along with you and just the physics engine on this game with all the planets. Yeah, this was basically Nintendo telling third parties, this is how you take advantage of the Wii motion controls. Yeah. Yet jerk. And, and yet no one really did. Yeah. It goes back to the thing I that I and many, many gamers, many Nintendo fanboys have said, is that apparently the only people who can make a good Wii game out, other than Nintendo is Nintendo. It's a... Yeah. And... But this really... You know, we thought physics were, and gravity were important in the side-scrolling games. This completely just flipped that premise. When you're playing in three dimensions, and you're actually adjusting left and right along with up and down. It's like, yeah. and oh, diagonal. Like, oh shit, I don't want to overshoot that planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you overshoot it and then land on the next one anyway. Yeah. Or just like the uh, moving to stuff like, the best is like when you would like jump and like the gravity would switch from like which one had control of you. That was just, that was like so much fun to see. Because it, it made you think, like, how is this going to affect, like, if you're trying to get to a specific route or something. And a lot of the introductions of some of the new things. We have the, a new character, Rosalina. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, you're collecting power stars, which is the same sort of premise as you had in Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, but you have to go, you know, get them through galaxies. Each galaxy had a number of planets. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the, 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 the planet maps that you played on were irregular, so there were some, some nifty feats of physics you had to do. Yeah. And, like I said, it... it did this... There was... I don't... I know it was in two, but did one have the Luigi coin stuff? Oh the green coin? The ones where you had to collect all the green coins as Luigi? I don't think so. I don't remember. It's been years since okay. I played Mario Galaxy. So. But, yeah. But, like, that was a... But, yeah, for the most part, like, it was... It was challenging, but not, like, infuriating. Like, it was a lot of just kind of figuring out what you needed to do. And, like, just kind of practicing at it. Like, I never... Only a few times do I ever feel like... Towards the end, did I ever feel, like, incredibly frustrated. There, there, was, there was a lot of emphasis in this game, probably more so than almost any other Mario game, on exploration. You want mm -hmm. This game really made me want to explore every bit of it, because, you know, again visually stunning but and you know because, mm -hmm. because it was unlike any other Mario game we had we had ever played we wanted to to know just how much they crammed into it yeah i mean and it's it's once again it's like you know we say we talked about uh new super mario brothers kind of taking the formula that worked for the side scroller galaxy took the formula that worked for uh, Mario 64 and just said let's, this is working how do, how do we make what works better instead of just making something new so yeah and uh, had some and I, I see you know in our notes here some really fun new power ups Yes, there was some new. You had Bisu was so much fun. It was. <laughs> it was fun. You had the, yeah, and then of course there was the boo suit and the spring suit. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ron. I mean, no, this was this was I think one of those games that was kind of required playing. If you owned a Wii, you this was like a yeah. must-have. There, there was very few games that were like must-own games on Wii. It was um, Smash, because it was Smash. It was Super Mario Galaxy. It was Metroid Prime 3. Mm -hmm. um, Skyward Sword, eventually. Yep. Um, Twilight Princess was okay. It wasn't really required, just because you had... The, it was also on GameCube, yep. so. But this this game was this yeah. was was definitely in the uh, get this game. Yeah, this is one of the few where, like if you own, like like if you own a Wii, you get this game. But again, it's not surprising because it's a Nintendo game, and usually Nintendo knows what the hell they're doing with the consoles. Exactly. It was yeah. so positively received this game, and, and I don't blame it when I played through it and I beat it, and it was probably for the first time in a very long time a very satisfying sort of Mario experience. Yeah. I was a, I still remember being a little confused. I'm like, so wait, did he just recreate the universe? <laughs> but it was it was still a fun it like you felt accomplished. And it was, you know, just, again, e even though we, we, and I've mentioned this before, and I've said, you know, we know the story of a Mario game. Bowser kidnaps Peach in this game. He doesn't, but he doesn't just take the princess. He takes the whole fucking castle. Yep. <laughs> Greedy asshole. And, but even though we know the premise, we know how it's going to end, Nintendo always changes it up, and it's it, we know what's going to happen, but how how you get there is always the interesting part. Yeah, kind of the it's not the journey, it's the or it's not the destination, it's the journey. Yeah, and I just find that there's a little story here. We're going back to the music. Um, 
one of the composers, uh, not Koji Kondo, another one of Nintendo's composers who uh, was uh, who had been tasked with the music for this game, originally wanted to have Mario Galaxy uh, to have that sort of Latin American style that we've heard in all every other game before. Mm. And um, however, when they when they they presented these ideas to Koji Kondo. Koji Kondo was like, nope. <laughs> yeah, and they you can you can it. you can you can take this Latin America stuff and toss it into the trash. Um. So the, this composer then you know went back to the drawing board and he presented three different styles of music to Miyamoto. It wasn't Koji Kondo who. Uh, Koji Kondo said that these Latin American tracks are no good. So this composer. Um, he created three different styles of music, presented them to Miyamoto. Uh, one of them was a straight orchestra piece. Another was a mix of orchestra and pop. And the last was pop. And Miyamoto said, yes, we are having a classical soundtrack for this game. Yeah. And it, 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 it definitely adds to it, like, you know, you mentioned that, mentioned that exploration was a big, and I think part of, you know, exploration and just the look of it, and the, the, the orchestral score just kind of adds to that sense of wonder. Like, you just kind of have to take a moment every now and then and just take everything in. It's very content aware, I feel. <laughs> I mean, the music, the music matches the scene. Mm -hmm. like if you're in space, you should have epic music. How is this that hard to understand? Well, keep in mind it's a Mar it's a Mario title, and as I said, every other game before it had that sort of Latin America sounding you know beat with bongo drums and congas and steel pans that we've heard like like even in New Super Mario Brothers, you remember the soundtrack. It's yeah, you know the 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 enemies and all the background stuff are dancing in time to the to the music. So yeah. We, 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 didn't, we didn't touch on that, but yeah, that was always a fun touch. So, you know, Mario Galaxy, critically acclaimed up and down. Um, some reviewers were call, have, have considered it one of the greatest games ever made, and I, I can agree with that. It might not be in my personal top three or five, but it, is, it was a really great, satisfying game. It's one of those games that... I don't know anyone who's played it that hasn't enjoyed it. Like, everyone I know who's played it is like, this was a really fun game. And the, the, that's hard to find one that's a game that, that has that universal reaction. Like, you'll find definitely find popular games, but you'll it's hard to find one that's kind of across the board loved. Yeah, I mean this this really showed off the Wii and was was an excellent showpiece. Plain and simple. Yeah. So let us move on. We I will get to to Mario Galaxy 2, but I I'm going chronologically. Mm -hmm. So, uh the next one that comes out chronologically, I love how a lot of these games have November releases because they all know what Black Friday is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. At least, at least, at least before Black Friday proper, but they're still in the November. Video games must be launched. Tri all AAA games must be launched between middle of November and the end of the year. Yeah, that's that's always how it works. And New Super Mario Brothers Wii is no exception. This came out November fifteenth, two thousand and nine. The the thing with all of these November game releases, though, it meant I could never buy them because. Since my birthday is in November, uh, April ha April always imposes a cutoff. After yeah. uh, after October fifteenth, I am no longer allowed to buy anything for myself until after Christmas. Otherwise, April will have no gift ideas. <laughs> See, I would say November first. Your wife is a smart woman. Oh, <laughs> I would say November first, but that's just me. Well. April, it, it's a bi-weekly pay period. April needs time. <laughs> a, it, I, it, I it's so one, of the, one of the games I was looking forward to in November got pushed back. Well, 
<laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Just, that later. But yeah. Uh, so, New Super Mario Brothers Wii, as I said, came out in the U.S. November 15, 2009. Similar in play to New Super Mario Brothers, except now in bigger form. Now we got the, we have a console. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the first 2D side scroller since uh, Super Mario World on a console? You're probably right. Let me just uh, check Lord Wiki on that. Well, there was uh, World 2, the Yoshi one. Yoshi's Island. But, I mean, like, for a major entry. Uh, let's find out. Hold on. Yeah. Let's, let's me consult uh, Lord Wiki here. New Super Mario Brothers Wii. Um, let's see. Because, like, memory serves, the last 2D one was... Yoshi's Island and Super Mario World and the, and the Super Nintendo, and then you had the portable one, the Super Mar uh, New Super Mario Brothers. They talked about a little bit ago. Well, Paper Mario was. That's a that's a gray area. Yeah, that's a gray area. I guess. And even then, they did stuff with 3D. Yeah, yeah I, I can't really say Paper Mario. Um, yeah, it might be the first true. Side sc first true side scrolling. Um, I know that it, uh, um, according to Wiki, it is the first game in the Mario main uh, series title to feature simultaneous multiplayer, and we will talk about that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we will, we will definitely talk about that. We will. We will talk about that because I've got some good memories for that. Um, and this is also the first Mario side scroller period to have up to four players. Mm -hmm. multiplayer, so... It's also the first to include what I consider to be a really annoying feature. Uh, it's the... The you suck ass mode? Uh, yes! <laughs> or as I, as I wrote down in my notes, the fuck that shit, uh... <laughs> <laughs> fuck that shit mode. It's, uh, to... Uh, for those of you who haven't played it, uh, I'm referring to, uh, there's... It's the first game to feature what is called the guide, which, um, it... When you die eight times in a row on any one level, the game will offer a guy to play the level for you. So that you can, you know, move on with the rest of the game. And, again, fuck that shit. I am a battle-hardened Mario player. I do not need some pissant guy saying, Oh, this is too hard. Do you want us to play for you? No! Jerk! <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I feel this is the what game had it. There was a game that I played relatively recently. Oh, it's um Shin Megami Tensei Four. Oh, I guess that's recent enough. But um, if you die more than twice in Shin Megami Tensei, the game says, "Hey, do you want me to put this in easy mode for you?" Why you're in Why you're in limbo, mind you. And the game says, do you want me to put this in easy mode for you? Like, and the game lists off, like, what easy mode does. And you're like, uh... Yeah, that, that, well, yeah, there's always that, there's always been that. Like, I remember, the one that would always drive me nuts is games, it happened a lot in the God of War series. Is it's like, uh, you've died a lot. Would you want us to put us in easy mode? This will only affect combat. And the thing I'm dying at is a puzzle, not combat. <laughs> yeah, kind of like kind of events. Yeah, that, that just always made me so angry. But, but this yeah. this wasn't this was this was you know not just to get you through certain parts of the level. They it they said you want us to play the level for you. I mean, you know they they did say that you know you can take back control at any time. And I'm like, no, no, screw you, no. You you sit there in your corner, help menu. Yeah. I don't I, need your shit. The I most got... infuriating thing is watching someone else play a video game when you want to yeah. play it. Yeah, I hate side seat gaming anyway. I don't want my own fucking console to do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind Let's Plays, but I have, I'm going into a Let's Play video with the concept of this is a game that I will probably play myself. Where I know that I'm not going to play period, but I want to see someone go through it. Yeah. It, it's it's not hogging the controller. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. Like, no, 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 no. I mean no. I I I get it. I mean, granted, we're, this is us being grumpy old men. 
I mean, I get it. Like, you feel like some a, a young kid is just can't do it. Sure, okay. But yeah, it, it, when 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 as you said, we were just kind of that the hard and bitter. I remember having to slog through. It does feel kind of yeah. like an insult. No save points both ways. <laughs> yes. Back in my day, I had to beat eight one where with had, only three lies, and I liked it. And, and yeah, where you had to time, you had to use perfect pixel placement to yeah, land. Perfect the, pixel placement to jump across screens that you had never jumped across before, and you have maybe half two pixels worth of room to keep momentum going. It's a jerk. I don't want some sort of pissant guy to be like, you've died a lot, do you want to... No! I've got 50 more lives! Shut up! Yeah. Fuck off! But, but there were other redeeming features. <laughs> yeah, all that... All that's, Ranting aside, this was a fun, another fun game. It was. It was for, for multiplayer too, although, although you may have lost some friends in the process. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So, for, for those who have not played... The multiplayer lets you have four people playing on, on a screen at once. The four people were Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Right? I'm not mistaken in that. I thought it was two it was Toads. Just... It might be two yeah, Toads? Toad, okay. Toad. Two different colored Toads, Okay, yes. it, one, it's one's like the normal red and p- Toad, and the other one's like a yellow Toad, I think. But anyway, um, when you're doing multiplayer, you don't pass through your, your other people on the screen. You bump into them... And they bump into you, and you can turn into a bubble, and they can pick you up. Yeah. But this also usually leads to them picking you up and throwing you into a pit. (laughs) Which is what something some of my friends used to do a lot, because if you lost, it's a shared pool of lives, mind you. Um, You know, if you died or became a bubble, you needed to rely on one of the other unbubbled players to get you out of there, to pop the bubble. And uh, yeah, so my friends would be assholes and they would pop they would pop the bubble directly over a pit. Or into a fireball or into a or into a chomp chomp or something like that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> or or do they just like, no, I'm tired of saving your ass. You're gonna sit there through the end of the level. You're gonna sit there and wait till I beat the level myself and then I'll revive you. Yeah, it's like, you're gonna sit here and watch me finish the level, and you're gonna think about what you've done. Yeah, <laughs> that may have been a line I might have used. What do you mean, might have? <laughs> you but, naughty, and, naughty toad! <laughs> Get in the corner, toad. I mean, it it, it could be really. It's it's another one of those. It's super fun, but frustrating as a completionist when you're trying to go like the secret route. And everyone else is like, no, we just want to finish the level. It's like, no, Let's just beat the level. No, we're, we're like, no, I want to get the secret points and the secret stars and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, no, screw that stuff. We just want to get the level. <laughs> we, want to get, we want to get our one else. We want to go on to the next level. Again, and this this wasn't even Mario Party, and this was still ruining friendships all over the place. Mario Party, Mario Kart. Now <laughs> we have Super Mario Brothers doing it, ruining friendships for us. <laughs> Mario is about building yourself up, not your friends. Yes. <laughs> you're building yourself up, and you're knocking your friends out of the way because they don't deserve the limelight. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was, I think, there was one power up that I remember, new one that I remember distinctly, was the propeller mushroom. Mm-hmm. Which was propeller nice. Propeller cap on your head, I think. Yep. And you like would hover. Yep. Okay. Again, very useful to get those, you know, hard to reach coins and and one ups. Um, it utilized the the Wii motion controls. It by default it's uh, Wii Mote and Nunchuck. But you, I and, and I preferred playing in the classic. Uh, whole, NES. I, I yeah. can't think. I, I I'm trying. Like everyone I know of, within like the first ten seconds of playing, said, "No, fuck the motion controls. We're playing classic style." Well, yeah, because it's like, hey, I re-, and suddenly five-year-old you comes back like, hey, I remember this. This is yeah. familiar. I re- I remember this. Oh, but this isn't my TV. I can't throw it at it if I die. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like shit, TVs are actually expensive now. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> well, they're kinds of back in ni- 1985 too, but still, yes, we didn't know. The parents would buy it, not you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. To you, it was imaginary. Play, play money. To the parents, it was, what the fuck, the kid just ruined a $500 CRT TV. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, the penguin suit. Oh, yeah. The penguin suit was another one. And, uh... Again, you know, again, the traditional storyline. Peach gets kidnapped uh, when Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings pop out of a birthday cake. Surprise! Uh, Wait, aren't there usually, like, supposed to be, like, sexy girls in cakes? Well, admittedly... I, I'm, I'm, uh, do we, Peach, do you, need to, do you need to tell something to Mario here? Uh, admittedly, Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings are in their birthday suits. I didn't need to think about that. <laughs> that is the nightmare you will have tonight. Well done. <laughs> no, to self it. Intermation, get alcohol. <laughs> yeah, just brain bleach during the break. So, again... News quite, quite liberally and often. So, <laughs> tons of... Again, tons of fun. And again, with each successive game, there's, you know, there's the element of familiarity, but also elements... New elements that just keep this... this, this these games really fun. Mm -hmm. And it, the trend continues six months later. With Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, coming. Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mario Galaxy 2 coming out in May 2010. Uh, again, very similar visually, very beautiful, just like the first Mario Galaxy. Um, uh, this, I own the game. This was one of those games that I had started and then college happened, so I have to re -pick, I have to pick it back up and finish it. Yeah, I know. I know. I've played a like. I, I I know I'm decently into my save file that's sitting on my Wii, but I didn't finish it. And as much as it's a fun style, it was it was pretty much the same thing as the first one, with just a few uh, other new touches, like Yoshi? the introduction. Of, yeah, and the thing I, the thing I remember is like the thing I remember most is I I hit that usual point of. I can't get that one star. And, oh, look, another game's come around. I guess I'm going to just forget about it. I can't get that one star. Fuck, I'll just kill everybody. It's just... Yeah. Well, it was... It was. <laughs> I distinctly remember it was, like, one of the Yoshi levels where he has to, like, eat spicy food or something, and he, he, he runs around wildly so you can sort of control him, and you have to, like, time everything perfectly. And I just remember getting so angry at that. But, I mean, it's still Mario Galaxy. It's still gorgeous. It's still fun. But I just remember getting really frustrated at that point. And there was a couple coins or a couple stars like that. Where it's like like this, you know, I was talking about the Luigi coins. And I was just getting so frustrated. Because it's another one of those, you know, it, the challenge is up that much more. And the completionist in you just is like, I want to get this, I need to get this so I can get 100%. Which is glad, you know, I'm glad I'm not a completionist. For most games, I, you know, if I can't, yeah, get, I, if I can't get something, I'll just be like, eh, alright, whatever, move on. I am not a completionist for a lot of games. But it's, it's different in Mario, and I think it comes down to two things is... In Mario, you Mario, you can usually figure out what you need to do, like just by looking around. Like you can figure out that there's a secret there, or just whatever. And so I think that's why it's a little bit like to reach that point is a little bit easier. The other thing I'll say is the original Super Mario World, the Super Nintendo game. I have played that, completed it so many freaking times. It's one of those. It's it's in that vein of the Super Nintendo game where it's just like, I want to go back. It's time to go play this game again, and you know I'll, I'll go through it again, and I still have a fun time. So I have kind of that mentality for Mar for you know Super Mario platformers. That's like I need to go back and do this again, and I think that's so I think that's kind of why for like Mario Galaxy and stuff I get I get that itch. Well, um, I do remember from what I played of Mario Galaxy 2 that it is a bit harder than the original. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it also contains that pissant help. <laughs> you've, mm. you've died a lot. Do you want to say... No! 
Yeah, and and of course it would finish the level for you, but it wouldn't get you what you what you needed. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm dying a lot, but it's because I'm trying to get this one star, and you're not giving it to me. A uh, couple of new power, a few new power ups. There's the spin drill. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's Rock Mario. <laughs> and Cloud Mario. Oh, look, Mario has finally ascended to the cloud. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lakitu is now out of a job. <laughs> um, as I said, we, there was a, we've got Yoshi. Yeah. And again, the orchestrated soundtrack, and again, very, very critically acclaimed. Yeah. And, and like, I, like, I kind of harped on it, but it is still a fun game. I'm not going to deny that at all. Now, and the soundtrack, again, you know, amazing... I mean, I own the soundtracks for both games. It's it's beautiful music. Mm-hmm. So, all right, we have gone through four games here in this first half. On our second half, we will give you another four games, the next four. Uh, we've got Super Mario 3D Land and 3D World and New Super Mario Brothers 2 and you. Oh, Nintendo with their titles. Oi. Uh... <laughs> But, They're running through the Final Fantasy Syndrome here. Oh, I, I, but I don't know. So, we will cut out. You'll have a few minutes of music. We'll go and you know, swim in an underwater level somewhere or, you know, find our way. Th- Peer right through space. Peer right like through that. space. Find a warp zone. Don our Tanuki suits. Whatever. You are listening to episode three of our 30th anniversary celebration honoring Super Mario. We'll be back. to downloadable content talking about Mario 30th anniversary celebration we're still here I think Ron and Doug picked up a few extra lives along the way by lives you mean beers then yes yeah, I just got refreshments so yeah, suddenly it's like here's oh I just got a hundred coins <laughs> yeah that, that's actually my, my Facebook notification on my phone it's the sound of the Mario coin <laughs> 
with a text message being the one-up noise. So, no, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy at all. Whatever gave you that impression? <laughs> Pot to kettle, call it kettle black. Much. Yeah, just a, just a, just a drop, just a little bit. Uh, completely unintentionally, actually, I'm wearing my NES controller T-shirt. It happened. Uh-huh. It happened unintentionally. It happened to be the first one I grabbed out of the clean hamper, so I was like, "All right." Got a lot of compliments in the doctor's office today, but anyway. Um, so we press forward now. We have four more games to talk about, and we will start with the first entry for the Nintendo 3DS, and it is aptly titled Super Mario 3D Land, which came out once again in November, this time 2011. And you wouldn't think it at first glance, but this game is jam-packed. 96 levels altogether. And this game combines 2D platforming with 3D platforming. And because it's on the 3DS, it makes use of the 3D functionality on the handheld. Although, of course, you can always leave that turned off. Which I do. (laughs) I do, too. It's like, I don't want to have to hold the DS a certain distance away, and and I wear glasses, and I don't know. Um, Yeah. This game is actually a, a lot of fun. I'm, you know, you wouldn't think it at first. It seems simplistic, and in terms of difficulty, it's ac- it's not all that difficult. I mean, uh, which is actually, I, I read a review on it. it. Was one of its criticisms that uh, I forget where it was from, but it said that any moderately skilled Mario player can rack up an obscene amount of lives. Yeah. And I mean, I've noticed that I noticed that I'll, even going back to new, that it wasn't that hard. The uh, the the Wii game that it, like it wasn't hard, and like especially since you uh, you kind of you can actually save the amount of lives you have. Yes. You know, it, it was you know it was pretty easy to build up a good stock, which. Also made it for if there's that occasional infuriating level, you were very thankful to have that huge supply. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that the one game that did that really, really well was going back to the NES uh, Mario Three, where in the early levels you you stockpile on lives because you are going to need every one of them. Mm-hmm. In the later, from like World, world Six onwards, you start burning through lives really fast. So I yeah. wish I wish more of the of the the platformers did that, but it, it's it's it, the difficulty has dropped. Bec- but you know e- they're still fun. Yeah, but- and I mean, the, the, like that's to me always kind of a a very dubious criticism for me is difficulty, the game is yeah. is too easy. I always take that with a very large grain of salt. In fact, a boulder of salt. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, it's like a game's too easy, but it's like, yeah, but I could actually experience the entire game with, versus hitting something that's too cha- so challenging that I can't get to the actual ending. Then it's like, well, then, you know, you're effectively saying, you know, you're effectively taking someone out of seeing, experience your entire product, so... I think that's kind of, like I said, too easy is... I I question that criticism a lot. And that's fair. Um, I like the mix of the 2D and the 3D. It makes for... It's, you know, it's basically Mario 64 Plus. Yeah. That's a good way to describe it. Um, Especially since we see some of the returns of former... Power-ups like the uh, the Super Leaf, which is the Tanuki suit. Yep. Um, we see some some uh, the uh, the boomerang flower. We see the prize box, <laughs> which reminds me of the uh, the toad houses of old. Yeah. Um, we have the star medals. So again, completionists mm-hmm. can can go crazy. 
done and done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's again, it's it's not it's it's I, I keep harping on it, but it's it's finding it's remembering what works and really owning what works instead of just trying to rebuild the wheel. Polishing it to a nice fine shine. Yeah, exactly. I have I haven't beaten 3D Land yet, but I am getting close. I, I was playing this actually quite a lot during my recovery from surgery, mm -hmm. so it was I have to get back to it and, and finish it. Next up chronologically, uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2, also for the 3DS, uh, re released a little more than a a uh, little almost a year later. It's August 2012 and very similar to New Super Mario Brothers 1. However, uh, the big claim for this game, the the, the major quote unquote you know change or, or addition, and you can see this on the box art. There's a huge emphasis on coin collecting. This was one of the first 3DS games I bought, and it. I, I got I got a lot of mileage out of this game. I mean, it was and granted, it was you know I commute by the subway every day, so I have time to play it. But still, like like one of the th challenges was to get a million coins, and it it takes a lot. I mean, they're pretty generous with it, but it still takes a lot of work. And like there was some DL, uh, DLC you could get for it to get kind of bonus levels for, like, challenges and stuff. And, like, you'd get, you know... Some of them, you know, were upward to, like, a 300 for, through a, for a level. Which is pretty generous, but... Still, getting up to a million takes... Quite a bit of work. <laughs> um, but, th I mean, there was the power-ups that would, like, turn you golden. And, so, like, enemies would get, you know, basically turn into coins, like... And like building up and stuff, so it was, it was an it was a nice twist on on the old feature and really emphasizing get as much as you can. It because of that, it very very much reminded me of Mario Land Three and, and Wario. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that and if you remember that game, you're playing as Wario. Your your the goal was to get all of the treasures so that you could have you know a planet. To call home, yeah. At the end of the uh, game, I, I, I regret missing that episode because that uh, I played War Wario Land was another one of those games I played whenever we were on a road trip, so I got to do a ton of them, you know, and finish. But yeah, it's there is just so much in it, and it, it's again even even though it's you know the same formula, it's just polishing it up again and like. I think the emphasis of, you know, let's build up as many coins as you can, build up to a million total collected, adds a nice replay value beyond just find all the different alternate exits and things like that. It was a lot more of, you know, we, we want you to keep playing and go back and have fun. And you, there, was those, there was a couple levels within the game proper, not even just the DLC, where it's like, you would notice that, hey, this game, this level has a lot more coins than others. When I just need to kind of have a quick fix of, I, like, I've got five minutes, I can play one level. I'll go through that one again and add towards my total. It was really good like that. Cool. I mean, it's... This, this game in particular was kind of, when uh, in terms of... Critical reception, generally positive, but some mixed. Uh, there were you had a, a good number of reviews basically saying, uh, "All right, been there, done that." Yeah, and I, and I mean I can see that, but it, it's again having the the emphasis, the extra emphasis on you know go go collect as many as you can for you know. Because I do think you got something f in the game for it, like maybe just an extra. I think it opened up a new world, or at least a new level in a bonus world. So it wasn't just for not just for being able to say you did it. You, you did get a reward, 
And I, it could be a little frustrating, but like I said, it was, for me, it was a lot of just, okay, I need to just, I want to just play a little bit now and work towards that total. And being able to kind of accumulate and watch as it grows is kind of, is really kind of satisfying because it does change your game style. Like, to bring up a completely different game, I remember the first, when I went through Skyrim, looking at the trophies, and it was how to save up as so much gold to get a trophy. And it took a while, and I was like, I was suddenly saving everything. It changed my how I played the game. And I. it seems weird to think of it, but there was the same thing in this Mario game was... Now I'm, you know, okay, I'll collect what I am when I'm just kind of playing. Now it became a much more tangible thing of, like, I am going to try and get as many coins as possible. And, like, you know, there was quite a few times where it's like, oh, crap, I'm running out of time. I need to finish the level because I've been so hung up on getting every single coin I can. It's it definitely has a, you know, a lot of replay value, and again, you know, if you are if you are a completionist, it's this will you know, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. So uh, we now move to the Wii U, the two games that are on the Wii U, and again, Nintendo, your naming conventions. Good God, um, New Super Mario Brothers U, which sounds like a college. <laughs> I wish I went Mario to went university. Mario. I didn't know they had universities in Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, it's just like uh. on the Wii U came out uh, November eighteenth, twenty twelve. Um, I kind of, I mean, I don't own a Wii U, but I really want to pick up this game from just what information I know about it. For example, the world, uh, the each the game's levels are sort of presented in a similar way that Super Mario World did, a la the world map. Um, instead of, you know, each individual level being its own thing. Um, interesting to note that the Wii U gamepad alternates, you could, you know, you could have people playing on, on Wiimotes, but whoever is using the gamepad can also be, like, the support player, because you use the gamepad. The gamepad doesn't... You can't control a character, but whoever is using the gamepad can control, can interact with the environment, such as putting down blocks or platforms or stunning enemies. Stunning enemies. Yeah, and it's this is one of the things that... I, I don't own a Wii U yet. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to eventually even get one. But I, I think this is something... I think we're going to see more of this even beyond Nintendo in the future is have have a different, you know, I, the best way I've heard to describe is asymmetrical gaming where you are both playing and you're both very involved and you're equally involved, but you, what you're doing is completely different things. If that, if that makes sense is, you know, you're still very much involved. You're still very much playing, but, what what you are doing varies different, be, varies greatly be, depending on what control you have on the hand, in your hands, and you're still both having a very you know, a, a, a strong experience. And I think it's something we're going to see more people playing with further on down the line. I think so too. I mean, I, although I don't know how that style of gameplay will last. I mean, I don't know whether Nintendo's next console will still feature this sort of gamepad slash uh, controller working in tandem but doing separate things. Mm-hmm. Well, it probably was because of the fact that they want to also say that, hey, if someone wants, someone else wants to use TV to watch something, then you can still play your game with the remote play option on the gamepad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean th that's possible. But again, with with right now, I mean, unfortunately, with how you know bad the Wii U is doing, how poorly the Wii U is doing, uh, that's I don't know what. Obviously, we know nothing about the the Nintendo, the NX. So, 
everything is wild speculation at this point, but we'll see. We shall see. There's uh, some new power-ups, like a flying squirrel suit. That that one just bugs me. That just seems like... Uh, uh, it's like you couldn't just keep the raccoon. But apparently with this flying squirrel suit, you know, you could uh, cling to the sides of walls. I'm like, so he's become Knuckles? Uh, <laughs> which which we, we, uh, we totally skipped over. Which game introduced the cat suit? Was that, was that 3D, oh, 3DS? Was that Mario 2? Uh, yeah. Hang on. Super Mario 3D World, I thought? Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Mario cat suit. Yeah, because that was when I, I just remember. It might be this one. Um, Mario 3D World. Okay. It was introduced in Mario 3D World, which we haven't gotten to yet. I thought it was I thought it was earlier than no, that. Nope, that's the next game. And suddenly the internet was happy. <laughs> and suddenly the internet was overjoyed. So with it, why not? Let's move on to the most recent Mario game, Super Mario 3D World, which was released uh, November 2013. Um Again, similar play to Super Mario 3D Land, but again, much bigger and more involved in scope. Taking advantage again of the Wii U's motion and the tablet controller. Interestingly enough, though, it's not just Mario and Luigi you can play as. Peach and Rosalina are playable. Yeah. Rosalina has taken off as a character. I mean, just, Absolutely. Just, just, just look how hard it is to find her amiibo. <laughs> So it's it's crazy. So it, it's and it's it's a neat neat to see. So yeah, um, four different playable characters are available right off the bat: Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Uh, Rosalina is an unlockable um, fifth player. So we kind of go back to Mario Two, or what that pitiful joke that was Mario Two for the NES. So again, you know, each player has their own different abilities. I, I have to wonder, though, if Peach is just as broken as she is in... <laughs> in Mar I'm just going to glide throughout the entire level. <laughs> yeah, it does make you wonder a little. Actually, I'm, I'm reading the Wikipedia article about 3D World. Uh, no, Peach is not broken. Aww. She can jump and she can float through the air for a short period of time. So, like, two seconds compared to the 25 seconds in Super Mario 2. So, yeah, you actually, you have to, it's going to be, like, just a slow descent, I feel like, instead of, like, just gliding across. And the thing I remember with Mario 2 with that is, like, oh, I'm going to go across this gap and then not pay attention to how far ahead. It's like, oh, crap, I'm in the middle of a gap. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's it's again, it's 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 playing with the system, the the formula again, and I don't, I don't, I haven't, I can't talk too much to it because I haven't played it yet. Um, I'm looking at the description of the game. Um, again, we just mentioned it, the introduction of the cat suit, which turns Mario, if Mario into a cat. I'm sure that was, I'm sure that was a direct result of Nintendo just going on to the internet one time. I, I remember listening to one person talk about how excited it was that if at the end of the level, if everyone's in the cat suit, they all meow. <laughs> oh, oh, Doug, you're, the completionist in you is going to love this if you eventually get the game. Um, in each level... It contains three hidden green stars, which are required to access certain levels. And each main level, each main level contains a, a hidden stamp, which can be used in handwritten posts to Meverse within the game's community. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, so I'm like, wait a minute, did Mario Three World just steal from Demon Souls? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. Yeah. Oh. With, because uh, um, I'm sure, because just like in Demon Souls, that leaves the door open for people leaving trolling messages, like, you know, there's a one up here, yeah, you know, one up here, and it's death. Yep. 
but oh well, I could that that it it still seems like a fun community thing too. Yeah, I, I have to I have to wonder though if it if it's uh, I mean it's Nintendo trying to take advantage of their their Miiverse technology, so why the hell not? Yeah, exactly. Why not own it? Um. The functionality that the gamepad has for this game, um, it it um it allows players to rub the touchscreen or blow into the microphone to reveal hidden blocks or items, hinder enemies, and activate mechanisms. Fuck blowing into microphones. <laughs> <laughs> blowing into that's microphones. A, that's really gimmicky. Blowing into microphones is why I never finished um. Fuck the uh, the the second um, cartoony Zelda for Spirit Tracks. Like I physically could not get the last dungeon to open because I couldn't do the right rhythm on the pan flute thing. <laughs> I never played Spirit Tracks. I was just like, eh, no. It was fun until that part. <laughs> uh, in a in a departure from. Convention This time, Bowser, obviously since Peach is playable, that means Bowser does not kidnap the princess. Gasp. Instead, uh, he decides to kidnap sprites in the Mushroom Kingdom named Sprixies. <laughs> it's not, no, it's not the Mushroom Kingdom, it's like the Sprixie Kingdom. Uh, I'm because sure, they I'm go sure it's through... tangentially related somehow. Let's see, Han. What's the plot of this game? Yeah. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad are exploring Mushroom Kingdom. How is there still a land left to be explored in Mushroom Kingdom, by the way? <laughs> like, how has this thing not been mapped out after 20 years or so? 30. 30. <laughs> anyway, they come across a clear pipe, and it's all tilted and, like, off-kilter. So Mario and Luigi fix it, being the plumbers that they are. And a Sprixie pops out and says, Hey, we need help. And then... Bow and then before they even ask who from who, Bowser shows up and grabs the the Sprixie. And they're like, Well shit. <laughs> Guess we gotta stop <laughs> Bowser again. <laughs> and they jump into the pipe and they enter the Sprixie kingdom. Let's also not forget that when you go to fight Bowser, it's not Bowser, it's Meowser. Bowser's in a cat suit. Oh dear God! I need to see images of this now. I'm sure Hold you're on. gonna. I'm sure you're going to to go on YouTube and find all the videos and and laugh uh, hysterically. I'm I'm looking this up right now. Meowser, <laughs> huh? M e o w s e r. This is going to be horrifying and again, fantastic. Again, again, this is this is all because Nintendo went onto Tumblr once. <laughs> oh, he, dude, he has whiskers that are lightning bolts. Or no, he's like breathing lightning and stuff. This is this is both horrifying and awesome at the same time. He's like a and tiger someone, suit. He looks like it, it, someone yeah. put in a tiger suit and then gave him like a knuckles hairdo. Man, some 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 of the official art for this is disturbing, and I'm not going to even go into the unofficial art. Yeah, don't don't. <laughs> <laughs> you stay away from the Rule Thirty Four stuff. <laughs> Safe surf on, on. <laughs> Pull up, Doug. Pull up. <laughs> oh. Isn't a me blow of him too, in Yowzer? I'm sure. I'm sure because again, the oh, wait, internet. Or is it? It's, it might be fan made. Never mind. This might be fan made. Yeah. Either way, it should not exist. Uh, Meowzer. <laughs> I wonder if Meowzer has a great big litter box. Oh. I was cleaning that out. Gonna have to, to so what is so what does Meowser do in his spare time? Just knock like toads off the shelf. Is Play with giant balls of yarn. Maybe he maybe he gets in touch with the cat guards from Battle Block Theater. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that is it for our main Super Mario franchise games. That's we have gone through all of the main ones. Um 
I know that there's probably going to be one of you out there who probably says, but you didn't talk about Mario 64 DS. That's because it's the same as Mario 64. Move on. Um, <laughs> that's why we didn't we didn't talk about that. But so, as is the inevitable in these types of retrospective episodes, we have to speculate a bit about the future. Uh, well, I already know what one of the future things they're doing is. Yes, I'm about to get to that. Uh, we have another main entry in the Mario series coming out in ten days. Uh, so, just you know, this podcast will be up uh, just after this game comes out, and that is Super Mario Maker. We are going to see insane stuff from that. We, I, you I, was, know, I can't wait for the speedrunning community to get a hold of this. This is like, this is the speedrunner community's like dream. Because Nintendo got the bright idea to go, you know, you know, why don't we let the fans make levels? Well, there, there'd <laughs> already, there's already been that. Like, you can like look up like the most like people have like gotten the tools to make levels from, like, previous games. And there's yeah, they, already they, they've some... basically custom-rommed certain levels from the original Super Mario and a couple of things like that. Nintendo just basically did it one step further and gave you an official tool and uh, you can do original Super Mario, Super Mario 3, Super Mario World, and new Super Mario. Yeah. It's li- like, I... I am really looking forward to seeing what people share of this. I mean, the, the people made like the automatic levels where it would just Mario would, could just coast through, and those were already fun to watch. And I can't wait to see what com- else comes out of this. Yeah, this game. Those, this... those who don't have an idea of, of what this might be, Nintendo when they did the World Championships earlier this year for E3, they showcased the Super Mario Maker level design ideas from a couple of the, like, in-house Nintendo people. Mm-hmm. And they had the speedrunners, the finalists, could actually go through the levels. And they're pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. September 11th, this game comes out in the States, and... Wait, it's not a November release? I, shocking, I know. Um, you know, I see this game, and it's pushing me... Further, it's pushing me further, pushing me closer toward the threshold where I go. Okay, I need a Wii U. Um, yeah, it, it's get that threshold is getting closer. My bank account isn't getting any closer, but the uh, the, the the want is is getting there. And what's going to be amazing is you can make levels and upload them. With, yeah. With one huge caveat, and I thought this was a really smart move on Nintendo's part, you can only upload levels that you make, provided you have beaten your own level. That is beautiful. Oh man. This is to stop people from trolling, basically, and it's to stop, it's stop people from trolling. But it's okay. That's just gonna make everyone like. That's gonna make you everyone else so angry too. Because it's like, damn it, someone beat this. Why can't I? That is that is the caveat. It says players can share their creations online to the game's course world, provided you ha- you, you must beat the level. That is, that is a condition of uploading. That is brilliant. So if I I, sus- I don't know how Nintendo is going to enforce that. There, there has to be something in the in the. S- well, you when you upload it, you upload a small video showing you completed. They they did they did talk about that before. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They they mentioned it during the world championships. I mean, being like, before you can upload a vid, before you can when you upload the stage, you also upload a video of you beating the stage in one run. That's that is beautiful. Okay. So thank thank you for that. I was wondering yeah. how Nintendo was going to enforce that because like, how do you make it? How do they make it to the intent that people just don't upload BS levels? Uh, okay. So you have to prov- not only do you have to upload the level, but you have to provide concrete proof. Yeah, that, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that's a good that's a good uh, way to do it. So yeah, you're right, Doug. That means it's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of pissed off people who who probably download and play these crazy tricky levels, but 
they're going to be so because yeah, as you said, you know, somebody's beaten this. Yep. At least one person has beaten this level, so it can be done. Yeah. So I, I, I like I said, I think I think it'll be good, good though. It's gonna. And not only can you make your own, you know, platforms and blocks and enemies. Um, you can manipulate the behavior of some of those elements in, in different ways. Uh, for example, you can stack enemies on top of one another. Oh, ha- dear. Have hazards come out of question blocks. <laughs> you, can use, you can use shells as protective helmets. Oh, man. You can make cannons shoot out coins, enemies, or whatever the creator chooses. <laughs> um... So uh, the, uh, I'm gonna have to buy, I'm gonna have to go buy a Wii U now. And, and the combinations make also allow you could also make any any enemy in the game larger by giving them a mushroom. <laughs> you can give um, them the. I, I, I linked the for you, for those who have not seen this. I, I gave a link in the thing, so you could probably stick this on the description, Brian. A link to the Super Mario World section of the World Championships. Okay, I, I mean, the idea of like. What some of the people did for the Super Mario World, like graphics. Excellent. I will definitely have to watch that. So, uh, this is going to be one of those games that I think is just going to be pure fun. Mm-hmm. I-, I think uh, it's it's definitely interesting. And also, just a side note, um, for the first time since Ocarina of Time. Koji Kondo is working solo, composing this game. Wow. Yeah, Ocarina of Time was the last time he composed an entire game by himself. So. Yeah. This this, this is, like I said, I'm, I give it a week before we start seeing some really insane stuff. A week? I give it a day. <laughs> Oh, people gotta like. We'll, we'll see stuff on the first day, sure, but I, I think we need some time for people to really create the crazy things. It wouldn't surprise me if you know they've have uh, Reggie or Miyamoto <laughs> in a closet somewhere cranking out. Le- <laughs> Whereas Reggie me- would probably have enjoyed every minute of it too. <laughs> yeah, where you know they're in the background. <laughs> Because, again, that's the caveat. If a level is uploaded, that means somebody has beaten it. Yep. And uh, players will be initially limited in the amount of levels they can upload online, though they can unlock the ability to upload more. I believe once you get more like fan approval saying that they're beatable, then you can uh, get more uploaded. This, so. is sound- this is sounding more and more like a really cool step for community stuff. I really do. I, th- I think that is one uh, excellent way that Mario can go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, you know, we've had thirty years of, of of Super Mario, and I I just I honestly cannot imagine you know more ways for them to keep innovating. It's been yeah. 30 years. I'm sure they will figure something out. I mean, again, Miyamoto, they keep cryogenically frozen. So <laughs> they take him out for E3, he smiles, and they put him back. Like, we lost Iwata, damn it. We're not losing you. I, I cannot afford a Wii U for months yet, but yeah. it's I can. I'm sure that all three of us are going to be checking YouTube... And just seeing how badly Nintendo fans troll each other with the levels they come up with. Yep. It's. Oh, but yeah. If you if you if you haven't yet, like, go on YouTube and look up like automatic Mario levels, and you will see some crazy ones. Like, there's one that's like there's a couple that are like set to music. Like, there's one for uh, Queens. Don't stop me now. <laughs> And it's like four levels that all work together. It's like the four parts of the band. Like, like each one matches like whatever each person's doing. It's insane. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So I totally recommend that. Excellent. <laughs> so 
Uh, so there's that's a a big I think big community way. Oh hi cat. Um, big community uh, exercise that game. But what other thoughts do you guys have, if any, about how do you think Mario will go forward? I I think there's going to be you know obviously with the next system there there's definitely going to be something. I mean granted it probably won't be a launch title, but it'll be a, they're they're going to find something to. To show off the next system, I think that's that's just kind of the mo of the Mario franchise, and it's it's not a bad thing because it, I think it it does kind of wake people up to hey, this is what this thing's capable of. So I think that's that's a very strong thing for it. Um, but I think we're gonna keep. I think we're we're gonna kind of see two branches in in the way we've already has. They're going to have the solid side scrollers, like really well done that. And there's going to be the 3D ones, like you know, the, I guess the best way to put it is there's two starting points: either the Super Mario Brothers, the original one for uh, for Nintendo, or Mario 64. And it's going to be kind of in one of those two veins, where it's going, you know, it's going to be very built on the exploration and you know, really seeing the whole world around you, or just kind of the the fun run through, like run around, see what else is going on, and see all the crazy things hidden in the level. I'm I'm waiting for the day when Nintendo makes a open world Mario. So I mean. My, when you said that, my first thought was immediately Mario sixty four because you it's not linear. You can do it. yeah, but it, it more like in, in a similar sense, but more so like um like the, the, the normal setup of Bowser kidnaps Peach, you have to go rescue her, and then you like basically are just left and right in front of the castle. Now you have the entire Mushroom Kingdom to explore. So kind yeah. of, so basically, like you do the platforming part and get Princess Peach, but then after that, free reign. Well, no, 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 like you you do the platforming while you are rescuing Peach. It's like you're like you're Mario sixty four and throughout the level, but like you're exploring like parts of the Mushroom Kingdom that you've been to before, or so like are using. You thinking, are you thinking like a Metroidvania? Yeah, Metroidvania, I guess, could work. Or, or I, I guess the simplest thing would be Mario Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, kind of like Skyrim within the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Along those lines, I could, you know, I would like to see, I would love to see a platforming game that utilizes every, every bit of the Mushroom Kingdom we have seen in these 30 years. So all the areas from Super Mario World, all the yeah, areas and like, from Mar- Mario RPG. And like that's what I think that, that open world thing could do. It would be like, you would see hints of like previous Unite all Mario the stages. entire kingdom into one game. Yeah. Or at least of what we know of the kingdom. I mean, because we've seen like, the, the kingdom itself is only usually a relatively grassy green area. But we know that that he has to travel through usually like a desert desert section or a water section or what have you along with some like usually like a weird like um, like the the super size or super small world but you can like even the general concept of like you go from like the grass the grasses of the mushroom kingdom near the peach's castle into the sahara's sasha hara land desert Sarasota land or Sapphira, yeah, Sapphira land desert, or you know, and you go from there. You go from there to like the the icy mountains. I don't know if there's like an actual name for the mountains to eventually get to to Bowser's like kingdom, for lack of a better term, with the fire and brimstone and Sauron all seeing eye looking down on you. Meowsers all seeing eye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I would love to see a platforming game or an open, open world game that combines every 
bit of the Mushroom Kingdom we have seen. Something else I wouldn't mind seeing, I don't think Nintendo will do it be because they don't usually, you know, do remakes, but I would love to see, still keeping the original difficulty, a remake of the first three NES games, but with the full 1080p capabilities that of the Wii U. But you can do it yourself, Brian. You have Super Mario Maker now. Yeah, but I don't want to work to make those levels. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be nice to see, just a cleaned up update. I, I would like to see a cleaned up update with, you know, updated for, I mean, for current consoles, but keeping the, keeping the difficulty. Yeah. I mean, they, they did that with All-Stars, but that's about it. Yeah, and that was Super Nintendo, but I, I would like to see sort of like a Super Mario All Stars, you know, for for the current for the current gen. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Maybe you know, up update the music a bit. You know, orchestrate each level. <laughs> oh man, just mentioning that, I've got the 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 World One theme from Super Mario in in my head. Yeah, I mean, you need to do something like that. Uh, I I love the dancing mountains. <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's a it's a lot of them. There's a lot of ways Nintendo could go to an end. You know, it's gonna be curious. I wonder what ideas Nintendo will get from some of the levels. Cause I'm sure there's some bullshit in there in the terms of service that uh, anything you upload to Nintendo becomes theirs and so on and so forth and bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Um, well, I could see a game too where they get like they compile a list of like. Here are like the top ten le levels that the Nintendo like, the, like Nintendo creators like, and then you can you as fans can vote on saying like you like them, you dislike them, whatnot. And then you have like the top ten like fan voted ones up there too, like they do a like an online catalog. Although it's Nintendo, so who knows? They know how online stuff works. I could totally see the, that the levels uh, in Mario Maker as uh, have what we've already seen become more part of like tournament play like sort of maybe like an eSports I could see that going in like though know, you have to navigate these you know the speed runs like speed run these randomly generated like beatable levels that the fans have made yep go you know you have you have you have two hours to beat these 20 levels go but uh, you know, there's it's it's been 30 years, and I'm sure the Miyamoto has not run out of ideas. So, do we have any final thoughts we want to uh, put on? You know, not just these games that we discussed on this episode, but on the Super Mario franchise as a whole. I know, Doug, you missed a you missed yeah. an episode. So, if you want to say anything about them. Uh, Now's your chance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I touched on it earlier, but Super Mario World will be one of those games I play until m my Super Nintendo dies, and then even then I'll probably still keep playing it, because it's, it's just such a fun, solid game. And it's 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 it, it'll take you a bit to complete, but it's still a lot of fun. Like, it, you feel like when you get that little star next to the 96... You know, completed. You you feel so satisfied, and it's it it is it's in that vein of Super Nintendo generation where it's just I will go back to that time and again and still have a lot of fun playing through it. And it's that is that is arguably one of my favorite games, just ever. And when your Super Nintendo dies, don't forget there are things called emulators. No, it's not, it's not the same. I gotta have the controller in it, my hand. That's it, that's fine. It, uh, it, it 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 took me a while. It, it took me a while to get to to accept Chrono Trigger on a system other than my Super Nintendo. That's understandable. <laughs> I mean, there is something to be said. It does feel very very weird to be playing NES games on an Xbox controller. I can understand <laughs> that, but you know, such that's that's the way of it. What about you, Ron? Anything? Any last thoughts you want to say on? The Mario franchise as a whole. Um, they basically I, the only thing I can think of really is whenever you think Nintendo's out of ideas, Miyamoto comes up with some really weird, but entertaining stuff, and just makes you realize, oh wait, 
this is actually a friend. Like, people, th th there are actually people in the town that actually know what the heck they're doing. At least some of the time. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a really valid point. Is like, I, the, the one thing I expect from Nintendo is them, for them to surprise me. They're really good at catching me off guard. Also, I mean, let's, let's, you know, not kid ourselves, you know, 30 years later, we're still playing these games. Exactly. We're still playing these games, despite knowing exactly the premise of every one of them. We know how they're going to end, but it's, it's how you get there. We're still playing these games, we're still playing them, now we're still playing the old ones! So, that is a testament to just how memorable and how fun they are! You know, you can, you know, you, you'll have reviewers that say, oh no, you know, this is repetitive, we've seen this before, but the amount of joy that these games have, and fun experiences that they've brought to gamers all over the world, is immeasurable. And that is something Nintendo has prided itself on, and will continue to, for as much as we rag on Nintendo on downloadable content, and we do! And we do. I will, you know, unabashedly admit that. We rag on Nintendo a lot, but they know how to make a good, fun game. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Enjoying yourself. So, happy anniversary, Mario. Now, go eat a lot of pasta. So, on our... We are going to do a part four, because we are. Part 4, we're not going to talk about you know, the Mario series anymore, but we're going to talk about some of the other Mario offshoots that have happened in these 30 years. So we're going to be talking about Mario Kart, Mario Party, Dr. Mario, some of the various uh, Mario sports titles. If, if Mario RPG doesn't get mentioned... That, that I will be very upset. Mario RPG got mentioned in the last episode. I deliberately included it. I knew it was... Damn a... it! <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I do have more things to say, because that's another wicked fun game. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Mario RPG, I felt it was too important to, to just, you know, talk about for a few minutes in an offshoot episode. <laughs> so I, I brought it into the last episode. Uh, yeah, oh, that game. That game is so hysterical. Yes. And that's another thing we'll be talking about in the offshoot episode, the Paper Mario. <laughs> so, which is known for its hilarious dialogue. The fact that Nintendo is parodying itself and makes fun of itself in those games is, is quite hysterical. So we'll be talking about that uh, in part four. And so... I think we've put a good bow on this, so if you have any questions, comments, thoughts about this episode or any other episode of Downloadable Content, remember, every episode can be found on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher, and you can send your feedback to either facebook.com slash dlcontent, at Twitter, at dlcontent on Tumblr, dlcpodcast.tumblr.com, and of course, you can always email us at dlcontent1 at gmail. Dot com. So, let us hear from you. We like we like feedback because we are all attention whores, including my cat who just decided to jump on my lap. Don't hit any buttons, or I will kill you. And all it remains for me to do is to thank Ron and Doug for being on this episode. And with that, I am Brian. Have a good one, everybody.